is not through with you yet. Don't give up on God because your breakthrough is just around the corner and God doesn't give up on us. He will never give up on us. You know, the adversary, as we always talk, and you know, that is Lucifer, the devil. He is very subtle, 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 subtle. And he is um, the master of tricks. He is the master of um, deception. He is the master of manipulation. He is the master of lies. And he is a thief. And you can go on and go on. We can go on and we can go on. He is the master of evil. So I will put everything together. He is the master of evil. So whether it be lies, whatever it is, that don't um, line up and it doesn't work with the will of God or the word of God, he is the master of it. So I want to encourage us today. Don't give up on God because God is not through with you yet. In spite of what you may be going through, in spite of the situations that you may be facing now, you know, God is not through with you yet. It's just a test. It's just a process. When I say don't give up on God, when we give up on God, sometimes um, things might not be going according to all we wanted. We might be praying, as I always say, we might be praying for as about a situation and we don't see anything happening. You know, so when we give up, we stop praying and say, oh, I've been praying for years now. I've been praying for months. I've been praying for weeks and um, I'm not seeing anything happening. So I think I'm going to stop praying. I don't think it's necessary for me to pray anymore. Don't give up on God. Don't give up on God in your worship. Don't give up on God in doing good. Don't give up on God in praising God. You know, don't give up on God in trusting God. Because everything boils down back to trusting the Lord. I've been patient in God. You know, waiting on God. It's not easy to wait at times. Can you imagine you're at the bus stop and um, you've been at the bus stop. You're supposed to reach at work um, 8 o'clock and you are at the bus stop from 7. Mm -hmm. That's a hour before, right? And you're there, 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 waiting. And you say, and when it reached to um, 7.30, and you say, my God, you're going to, my God. I've been here from seven and um nothing. And I'm going to be, and then you look again, it's quarter to eight. And you say, my God, look at that. What's happening now? What's happening now? And then, no, when you look, it's like maybe um 10 minutes to eight. Mm. And you say, oh, no, no, no. And maybe you just walk off, move from the bus stop and you walk off and there goes the bus, whoops, mm -hmm. and it passes you. Just like that. It has happened to me. So I can tell you about it. It has happened to me. Mm. There goes the bus. Whoops. I just turned my back in and decided to start to move. And the bus passed me. Guess what happened now? I'm going to be late for truth. I'm going to be late for real. You know? So this is what I'm saying. It's an example. When you think that all is over, all is finished, and nothing is going to happen, just in the nick of time, you know, God comes through for you. We have to just wait on God, you know, because God is an on-time God, as we always say. Whenever God works, whenever he moves, whenever he do what he does, it's the right time. Mm. It's the right time. Maybe, just maybe, I might have took, taken that bus and when I look, the bus break down up the road, even if I get the bus seven or seven, at 7 15. And then guess what? The bus break down and I'm there. And 8 30, I'm still on, on that um, bus that break down. So I don't get to reach the work early any anyway. You know, it's it's just an example. You know, don't give up on God because God is not true with you. Whatsoever it is that you're going through, if your children giving you a problem, if you have a son or a daughter and she's on drugs or is on drugs, 
is following bad company, don't give up. Keep on praying. Keep on putting them before God. Call your children names to God. Tell God about your children. You know, talk to God about your children. Keep on reading the word of God. Stay in the word of God. You see, the word of God opens our understanding to the will of God and help us to know what God wants from us and how to trust God. When we read the Bible, we will say the Bible has a lot of stories, but there are stories to encourage us. You know, there are stories that um, other people went through years, years, years that have passed. Take, for instance, I look at this one, Joseph, the dreamer. Yeah. Look at how Joseph's life went. Look at how that life took um, everything um, happened for him. First, his brothers were jealous of him. His name, we call him Joseph the dreamer because he was a dreamer. And whenever he dreams something, that is what takes place. You know, God gave him that gift, you know, and his brothers were jealous of him. You know, they tried to kill him. And then, you know, God would say, no, you're not going to die because it's not your time to die. You know, that's why I say God is not through with you yet. God wasn't through with Joseph. So the brothers, even though they wanted to kill him, they couldn't do it. You know, so they say, all right, one say, OK, no, we're not going to do this. We're going to throw him in a pit. We're going to do him this. We're going to do him that. We're going to sell him. And that's what they did. And when they, when they sold him, all right, he was like a slave then. Then they end up in Potiphar's house. God is not true with him yet. God wasn't true with Joseph. End up in Potiphar's house. Potiphar's wife made an advance at him. And when she didn't, if it didn't work out for her, she bawled, she cried out for wolf. Then guess what happened to Joseph? He went, they threw him in prison. And right there in prison, something miraculously happened for him. You know, he's Joseph the dreamer. So people had their dreams and he will interpret the dreams for them. That's the gift that God is not true with you yet. So if God did it for Joseph, until Joseph become what? We would have called it the prime minister. Some say the governor. Some said it is, some said it that. But he became a ruler, a ruler in Egypt. And he was the savior. God would allow him to be at that um, place at that um, particular time to save or to rescue his family from famine. Mm -hmm. So God is not true with you yet. So there are many more stories there. Mm -hmm. Men, the woman with the issue of blood, ears. Years, I love that one. I'm telling you, she was there suffering. She went to doctors. This they couldn't um, stop what's taking place. Uh, what was taking place with her? They couldn't heal her. They couldn't do anything. They gave her medication, and maybe she spent out all that she had. You know, trying this doctor here, just like what may be happening. You might be there, and um, the doctors tell you that um, you have um, this ailment and. You've been trying here. You're spending your money there. You spend your, you do this type of procedure. They do this check. They do this test. They do that test. They do that test. And there is nothing, no cure, nothing at all. Instead of you getting better, you're getting worse. But God is not true with you yet. Because as I said before, if you live for five more years going through this, this means something is happening for you. Because you spend these years, you're going through, yes, you're going through, but you live out until five years. And imagine if you go for another 10 years. You have some people with some testimony. I'm telling you, I've heard some testimony. I have heard some testimony from some people. I'm telling you what they have been through. And I say, my God, I don't know if I could have managed that. Or, you know, but, you know, God knows what to do to who and allow to who. Because guess what? He knows what you can bear. And what you can't bear. And then in the midst of it, the Lord Jesus is there. He's there. He, he said, will never leave us nor forsake us. Don't care what we're going through. This is why the word of God is so good for us. You know, the word of God protects. You know, it, 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 it is our light. It opens our eyes. You know, it, it's, it, it, it's the word of God. It teaches us how to be patient. It teaches us how to love. 
how to worship God, how to trust God. You know, the word of God teaches us how to walk, how to talk, how to love each other. You know, so this is why the word is so important. As Christians, we have to be reading the word and we have to be praying. Even when sometimes you might go and go, go to pray and you don't even know what to say. I'm telling you, it's happened to me. I don't even know what to say. I go before the Lord and I say, God, here I am. But I don't even know what to say. Sometimes you're so overwhelmed. Sometimes the burden is so much. Sometimes, um, you know, things might be happening in your life and it's like, oh God, I can't manage this. I can't take it. It's so much. You don't even know how, what, what to say to God, you know, because everything is, it's so much. But if it's even to say, Lord, have mercy on me. Remember me. Remember me, your daughter, Paula. You see what is happening because God knows. He knows what is taking place in our lives tonight. Mm -hmm. He knows what we face is on a day-to-day -day basis. He knows um, the road that we are treading on. But guess what? The Lord wants us to trust him, mm -hmm. to depend on him. Mm -hmm. Have the Lord to be your only source. And when I say a source, I mean rely on God. Even when, even when you have this job, and you know that your job paid this amount of money. Don't think about that. Don't rely on that. Think about God. Say, Lord, you are my only source. And if it wasn't for you, this job wouldn't be possible. I wouldn't be able to go out and do this. You are my strength. You give me the strength day by day to go and do this. You give me the wisdom. You give me the knowledge and the understanding. You are the one that allows me to be favored by my employer. Every year I'm promoted. I understand because you have given me this understanding. Mm -hmm. In the field that I am in, you allow me to be the best. It's not me, God. It's not me. It's not because I, um, I have um, um, all of these degrees. Yes, I could have had these degrees. And guess what happened? But gone out of my mind. Yeah, have, have you ever seen persons or you see somebody on the road walking, you know, out of their mind and they're doing this? And somebody said, You know, say me know that woman there. I me know that man there, you know. I tell you, say the man bright, him, bright, him, bright. Him go high school, him pass him exam them, him pass him CXC, him pass him GDD, and him pass this, and him get him masters in bachelor's and every this in the university and him this and him. And then all of a sudden, me say the man gone out of mind. All of a sudden, the man gone out, walk out, and from him, walk out, there goes. So God is so good to us. God is so good to us. I have seen those people. I have seen those people. I'm telling you, they are in Jamaica here. I have seen them. And I know that they are overseas also. God is not through with you yet. Don't give up on God. Don't say, God don't care for me. He's not doing anything for me. Yes, he's doing a lot for you. This morning, he wakes you up in your right mind and body. And you're on this program now. And you're going to stroll through Facebook or YouTube. And you're going to come up on this program. And you're going to hear a word here from this platform. God is not true with you yet. Don't care what you're going through in life. If it's an addiction, God is able to take that away from you. All you have to do is trust him. If you have a house problem, you know, if it's financial problem, you know, if it's a marital problem, you know, if it's a family problem, whatsoever the situation may be, God is not true with you yet. You know, he has, you have, a. all of us have a purpose here on earth. We were created for God's purpose. Yeah. But sin, sin, Step in, are we allow sin to take over before and we walk in that path that the Lord was not pleased with? But now we are on this track and we are going to stay on this track and we are going to trust God on this track because we know that we have a God that never fails, He can't fail. We serve a big, wonderful, you have a song say. I serve a great, big, wonderful God. He's 
always victorious, always watching over us. Who can challenge him? No one can. All you have to do is trust him. You might be sitting there and you're looking and you're listening on this live and you might say, oh, Auntie Paula, you can say that. You're not going through what I'm going through. Or you can say, oh, you're having it easy. That's why you can say this. Mm -hmm. The doctors told me that um, you have a terminal disease. Or the, or, um, the landlord said to you, say, guess what? You have to leave within this time. Or you have just lost your job. Or your son or your daughter, you know, they take up bad company and they start doing things out of place. Or your husband is cheating on you. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you something. You might be saying that, Auntie Paula, you can say this because everything is easier, sugar dandy for you. Oh, no, it is not. It is not. I have been true. I have been tested and I have been tried. And I believe in my heart but that I am not finished tested as yet because God wants me to come out as fine gold because I must make it. I must make it in. I have been tested in many ways through sickness. Doctor tell me one thing and I said, no, doc, you are not the manufacturer of this body. God is. And here I am, you know, I have been tested many, many, in many, many, many ways, many, many, many ways. You know, I have a lot of testimony. I have a lot. If I start with some of them, I would have never finished for the night. I have a lot of testimony, but here I am. Yeah, because I was created to worship God. My purpose must be fulfilled. And the main one is to serve God. And this is what God wants from us. Our main purpose on, on this earth, on this land that we are living in now, is to serve God, to give him our best, to trust him, to depend on him, you know, to let God lead us and direct us, you know, walk in his statutes. You understand? As Christian, yes, we're going, we make mistakes. We do make mistakes. We are human. We do make mistakes. But guess what? When you make mistakes, don't try and justify those mistakes. Don't do it. God don't want us to justify the mistakes saying, oh, it's because of this. It's because of Ari Brown. It's because of the children. It's because of my husband. This is where the word of God comes in. We have to read the word of God to know what God wants from us and how we are to serve him. Prayer, we have to pray. That's our communication. That's how we communicate with God. That's how we build our relationship with the Lord. You know, if you have a relationship with um, whether your children, your husband, or your family member, if you don't talk, you and them living in the same house. Can you imagine? Mm -hmm. You live in the same house with your mommy, your daddy, and your siblings. And every day you get up. You get up. You, um, you look about yourself and you just step out. You don't say nothing to mommy. You don't say nothing to daddy. You don't say nothing to your siblings. You come and um, mommy prepare the dinner. She don't even call you and say, um, Janet, your dinner is ready. The dinner is just prepared and nobody talking to each other. How would that go? Mm. That couldn't work out. It, me no say it couldn't work out for me, you know, because I have to say something. So it's the same way with God. If you have a relationship with the Lord, you have to nurture that relationship. So by nurturing the relationship, you have to pray, you have to fast, and you have to dwell in the word. You have to stay in the word. You have to be constant in the word. So that's by reading the word of God. You know, you have to be singing to him. Mary loves to sing. Yes. And I love to sing too. But everything that I'm doing, when I'm doing my little housework or any little thing. Anywhere, I just find myself humming. Sometimes even if I'm not saying, I'm, I'm just humming. Don't care where I'm going, you know, and what I'm doing. If I'm just there and I'm just there and our, I'll be going out um, like Ghana and we are going out and we are going to have, going to a dinner or something. And I'm in the vehicle. I start singing. Amen. I, it's, it, I, it just come, it just comely. I have to sing. Something has to happen. So right there, I'm there and my mind is on the Lord. You know, I'm there and I'm looking out. 
we might sometimes we 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 lost in talking and we're talking and we're talking and we're laughing and having a good time, you know, because we do that. We have a good time, but whatsoever we are talking about, it always relates to the Lord. We don't we don't we don't go and talk foolishness. You know, we always we, we will be looking out and looking at the trees, looking at places that we pass, and we say, Lord God, be look how far they place there. Look how God great. You know, that's how we that's how we operate, you know. God, good man. Look at that. Look, you know, so look how they saw. Look at the inside there. Oh, it's a beauty. God is so good. Sometimes we have to look. The one moon. Everywhere we go, the moon did it. Do everywhere we go, the, the sun is there. Every. That's how we talk. You know. Sometimes we have start to talk. I want that snake in them woodland there. I want that. Yeah, no, seriously. That's how we talk. That's how we operate. You understand? But it's always about God. We don't waste mm -hmm. time on foolishness and, you know, babbling and all of those things. You know, we are dear positive. So if eventually, for me, I'll be there. And if I'm quiet, I'm there meditating. So right there, a song comes, you know. So we have to keep our heart tuned tune mellow in the lord you know and this is what god wants from us and the lord love when um we are going through stuff and we are going through some situation it's not easy but yet still we can say thank you jesus thank you lord i am going through but lord i'm trusting you and i thank you i thank you because i know that you're going to come through for me i know that you're an able god I know that you can see me through these storms. The storm clouds rises. The billows are rolling. You know, the sea get rough. Sometimes it turns into a hurricane or an earthquake. But God, I know that you are able. You're in the midst with me. You're right in the midst. Just like Daniel. Daniel. Daniel knew. Daniel knew what the plot was for him. He knew the decree that was signed. He knew about it. And Daniel purposed in his heart to pray the same way how he did for days and months and weeks and years. The same way that he prays every day, three times per day, he prayed. And Daniel, the scripture said, Daniel opened his window. He never lock up him window when he hear the decree pass and say, anybody who them catch praying to any other God except the God of um, Nebuchadnezzar or who the king may be. We are going to throw him into the lion's den. Feed him to the lions. So even though Daniel knew that that decree was passed, Daniel said, oh, you know what? I serve a God that I know that never fails. And if God allows me to go in that lion's den, well, so be it. I am not going to back down and I'm not going to give up. Can you imagine? Mm -hmm. So Daniel opened his window and he prayed. And they saw him and they took him and they threw him in the lion's den. But guess what? Mm -hmm. God could have stopped Daniel from going into that lion's den because God is powerful. He's all powerful. Amen. But you know what? You know what? It is to show us today that even in the lion's den. So what is a lion's den today? A lion's den is a situation that you go through because it was a situation that Daniel was going through. You know, it was a crisis at that time. So we are going through our lion's den situation. We might have a fiery furnace situation too. Yeah. We might have a pit situation, a red sea before us, Jericho wall standing before us, Goliath, Philistines. You know, Pharaoh and his army is coming for us. And Red Sea be, it before us. And when you look there, so you see, I'm all right. And when you look there, so you see, is it right? So all sorts of things taking place in our lives. Those are the situation. And Daniel still prayed. Mm -hmm. And Daniel was thrown in the lion then. Mm -hmm. But Daniel, guess what happened to Daniel? God was with Daniel right there. As I said, God could have allowed it that Daniel didn't go in that lion's den. But he allowed it just to show us that even in the lion's den, he is there if you trust him. Because Daniel trusted God and he knew that God would have brought him out. 
would have seen true. So it's the same way for us today. Don't give up on God because he's not true with you. Don't care what you might be going through today. We are here today to encourage you. We are always here encouraging others. You know, that is this is what we are here for. We are not going to come on this phone and tell you and sit down and say, because I know a lot of people love to hear this. Oh, you're going to get a blessing today. I can see a sister walking in our blessing today. I can see a this one. Every day we are blessed because we wake up, so we're blessed. I tell you, we are blessed. We are blessed. We are not in the bed of affliction. We are not on a machine string. Yeah, I have seen some people. Look here, I go on YouTube. And when I'm looking and I'm strolling through, I see a man there. He has no arms and no feet. I think maybe a lot of us seen him. And he's there and he has a family. Come on. He has no arms and he has no feet. And he's there. And I see him swimming. I see him doing this. I see him doing that. And I see some other people with some all sort of, you know, all sort of things. And I'm saying, my God, look at these people. And they are still going out. And they, I want to listen. They are still giving God praise. So they are thanking God. And we have our hands and our feet functioning well. Our eyes we see. We see all blind people at work and blind people are telling this. And they're doing that. And, they do. and I'm saying, look at us. You know, we don't have any disability. And we wake up in the morning in right mind and body. And because, because, because we're not getting through with this, because we're not getting through with that, we start to blame God. Because it's not happening. We don't want to praise God anymore. We don't want to read the Bible. We don't even bother want to go to church. I mean, I go to church for me, I go to church. I mean, I see nothing not happen for me. I mean, I see the, why we serve God. Why? Why do we serve God? We serve God because what God can give to us or we serve God because God loves us and he paid that ultimate price for us. He did that ultimate sacrifice. Uh, isn't it the cross that is on your mind? It's the cross on my mind. Every time I remember, every time I think about Jesus, I think about the cross. That old rugged cross. What he went through for me to have this free and wonderful salvation. This free access to come boldly to his throne. To say something to him. To have this forgiveness. I can go to him and say, Lord, have mercy upon me. Come on. God can take us out anytime he wants. We belong to him. I can tell you that. We belong to God. We are God's and made. Just like a furniture man, I said that before, make the furniture and him put the board together and sand it down, him do this, him do that, and him spray it and him fix it up. And if him feel like, so, oh, it not look good enough, but want to change it. Him can't do anything to it. Can pray. That's God. You know, he owns us. Although we get free will to serve him if we want or not, he owns us. God owns us. I'm telling you, he owns us. Amen. And that price that he paid, that debt that we owe, that debt that we owe, he went on the cross for it. So don't say that God don't love you. He does. And he knew you before you were even formed in your mom's womb. And he knows what we are going to go through. He knows that the adversary, which is the devil, from you say yes to Jesus, the devil is going to be fighting and he's going to be fighting and he's going to stand up and he's going to try to block you and he's trying. But guess what? God don't want us to be spoiled children. Mm -hmm. He wants us to come to him. And you know, a lot of time when we go through some stuff, you know, it's because of disobedience too. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we are so disobedient. Sometimes if we just listen to that still voice, Sometimes the Lord will say, don't do that, Paula. Don't go there. Sometimes we don't ask God, you know, we don't seek God um, intervention. We don't go to God and, uh, and talk to God, you know. Go to God for, uh, we're going to do something, we just jump and do it. We don't talk to God and say, Lord, well, all right, we're going to move the cup from out of the, um, the dish drainer 
and I'm going to move the cup from off the table. So, Lord, I'm asking you for your direction. You know, I'm asking you for your protection. I'm asking you, Lord, just tell me what to do and how to go about this. You know, give me your direction or instruct me, Lord, how I must go about this. No, we don't. We just go ahead. We want this. I want that. And I'm going to just go and get it because I can get it. I have free will to go and get it. So sometimes some of the problems, some of the situation that we face is, you know, we help to cast them on ourselves. But nevertheless, our God is a merciful and kind and loving and understanding God. And God knows that we are human Amen. and we are limited. Let me tell you, we are limited, limited, limited people. Our understanding is nowhere near our Lord's. Nowhere. He owns the future. He knows everything. We can't hide from God. What we can hide from him? We can't hide a thing. What we can't hide? No. I can't hide nothing. No. The word of God says if we go in the lowest part or the deepest part or the darkest part of the earth, God sees you like it's just daylight. If we even go down in our hell, him see we, him know everything. He knows everything. God knows my future. He knows if I'm going to live for the next 40 years, 50 years, two years, one year. He knows, all right, God is so powerful that if I live for the next 40 years or 50 years, God knows what I'm going to say. In those times, he knows us, he knows us, and he knows what we are going to do, he knows how we are going to be, he knows how we're going to look, he knows everything about us. He is our source, he is our provider, he is our sustainer. He's not true with you yet. Don't care what you're going through, he's not true with you yet. God is God, and he's an on time God, he's all powerful. And when I say I'm going to repeat that word again, all powerful. And God works on his time. Not my time. My time might be, I think that I need it now. But God said, no, Paula, you can wait a little bit more. Mm -hmm. You know, and his time is the right time. You know, and sometimes, or we might think, God is going to work it out. I will might pray for it to work and say, God, I want you to move the cup from off of the, the, the table for me and put it under the table. And we might be looking for the cup to move off the table because that's what we pray for because the word of God says, ask, you know, and it shall be given. So we are asking God to move the cup from off the table and put it under the table. And that's what we expect to happen. But guess what? God moves the table and put it in the refrigerator. And that's where it must go. You know, that's how God works. So God don't work, you know, sometimes we always think. Sometimes we might ask for something at the time and we get it, you know, because God see that, okay, I'm going to give my daughter this right now because she really needs it right now. But sometimes you don't get it the same time because God say, oh, she can wait a little bit more. But tonight I just want to encourage you and to let you know that God is not true with you yet. He's still there. He's still working on your behalf. He's still right there in the midst with you. Call on him. Continue to call on him. The widow woman, when she keep on going to the unjust king and she keep on asking him, avenge, avenge. She wanted something to be done. Something was going on in her life and she wanted um, you know, a breakthrough. She wanted a deliverance. She wanted justice and she keep on going to him. And the scripture said, the king fear neither man nor God. So him not respect nobody. But guess what? She wearied the king. She, the king tired her. As would have said, me tired her. Me can't take her. She just come and nag nag me so. Me can't bother with her nagging man. Me, you know what me go do? Me go just yield to the lady here, you know, man. Me go just do what she want, you know. Cause me can't take her come every day. Me not get no peace as every look me look at the lady come. Every look me look at she. If you don't mind, she the king would have start hide from her. Mm. But him say, oh, 